internet, this is one of my favorite videos to do. Today I am going to do my favorite books of 2017 video. Now I don't really like to do a set number of favorite books each year. I just basically look through all the books that I read the previous year and see which ones are worthy of being a favorite. And then I go from there. Obviously I don't want to have too many, but since I read 77 books in 2017, all of my favorites ended up being 12. So these are my 12 favorite books of the year. I'm not going from least favorite to favorite for this. I'm basically just gonna go in the order that I read them. Because trying to put them from least favorite to favorite Sounds way too stressful and I don't need that in my life. So the first one I have to share with you today is Of Fire and Stars by Audrey Colthurst. I read this back in January. This is a YA fantasy book about two princesses who fall in love. Princess Dinah has basically been promised to this prince from another kingdom her whole life. And so at the beginning of the book she shows up at that kingdom and she actually ends up falling in love with the princess sister Mare. And I love this book and it's wonderful. Probably one of my favorite things about it is the fact that it's a YA fantasy standalone, which you don't see very often. And I, even though I wouldn't be upset if she decided to write a sequel, I do kind of like that it's a standalone. I also really love the LGBTQ rep in this book. There aren't really labels used. It's just like a normal thing for people to be with someone that's their same gender. And it was never an issue that Dina fell in love with Mare because she's a girl. It was just the fact that she was already promised to the brother. But I love that it's just like a normal thing in this world and I just really loved it. And you don't see LGBTQ representation in fantasy very often so I really really liked it for that reason. And even though I read this at the very first of the year, it still stands out in my mind. It's one of my favorite books that I read this year, and I think that means something. The next book I have for you is Three Dark Crowns by Kendara Blake. This is another YA fantasy book. It is about three triplet queens, Mirabella, Arsinoe, and Catherine, who were basically split up when they were younger and raised separately. And then once they reach the age of 16, they basically have to kill each other off whoever is left standing gets to be the next queen. That's just how things work in this world. I read this book, I want to say in March, and then I also read the sequel which came out this year, One Dark Throne. I definitely prefer this one over One Dark Throne, although One Dark Throne was also very, very good. But this book isn't so much the, the killing part, it's kind of the setup for that. Um, I really, really loved it. I thought it was super intense. I got really, really into it. Having the different perspectives from the queens and a few other perspectives as well really didn't bother me. Um, I know it bothered some people. I didn't mind it at all. And I just thought it was a really, really great fantasy. Um, originally this was going to be a duology. I think there's going to be more books now, which I'm really, really excited about because I love this series. And I highly, highly recommend it if you like fantasy and you haven't tried it yet. The next book I feel like is going to appear on a lot of favorites list, and it may be my number one book of the year. I think it probably is my number one favorite book of the year. That book is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. This is a YA contemporary story, and it is about the Black Lives Matter movement. 16 year old star is basically the sole witness to her best friend being shot by a police officer and it's about her just dealing with grieving her friend being a witness and what all that goes through being one of the only black girls in kind of a more well-off school that she goes to and I just really really loved this book I think it's so so important for people to read I wish I could put this book in the hands of everyone that I know and make them read it because I think that everyone should read this book and there is a reason that this has been a number one New York Times bestseller for as long as it has and even when it wasn't number one it's still on the New York Times bestseller list it's been on there basically since it came out and it's well well deserved um, if you haven't read this yet you're really really missing out you really need to give it a try like I said I wish I could put this in the hands of everybody that I know because I think it's such an important story next I have a conjuring of light by the E Schwab this is the third book in the shades of magic trilogy which is one of my all-time favorite trilogies ever I love this series so much the first book a darker shade of magic is basically about a guy named Kel who is able to travel in between different Londons. There's kind of different worlds um, that all kind of reflect each other, but they are different. And he's one of the only people that can still travel in between these worlds. So he is a messenger for the different rulers of each world. And he's also a smuggler. And then once he meets 
Delilah Bard. Some crazy stuff starts to happen. It's an adult fantasy series, and like I said, it's one of my favorite series of all time. The conclusion, Conjuring of Light, came out this year. It is a chunky book, and it is a wild ride from start to finish. I loved this conclusion. It was amazing. It had me on the edge of my seat the entire time I was reading it. I had a lot of feelings about what happened, and I cannot wait to reread this series. I may even reread it in 2018. I don't know, but I want to reread it soon because I love this series so much, and what a fantastic finale. The next book I have is Faking Normal by Courtney Stevens. This is a YA contemporary about a girl named Alexi who is dealing with the traumatic aftermath of being sexually assaulted. She really hasn't told anybody and it's just about her grief and her mental state and how she is dealing with it. She becomes friends with a kid named Bodhi who has problems of his own and they form this really amazing friendship and kind of help each other through their dark times. It's a beautiful story. Courtney Stevens' writing was fantastic. I cannot wait to read more by her and I just really really appreciated the story. It was really really hard to read because she was sexually assaulted so obviously there needs to be a trigger warning for that and I'll also put a trigger warning on this book for self-harm if you are not able to read stuff like that if that bothers you but I really really loved this book and I wish it got more attention than it does. Next I have The Princess Saves Herself in This One by Amanda Loveless. This is a poetry collection that I absolutely loved. Um, this was actually the very first poetry collection that I've ever read and it's still my favorite as of right now. I just really identified with a lot of the poems. I have a lot of the pages flagged so I can go back and read the poems and they just really meant a lot to me. This book got me interested in trying to read more poetry and that's a new genre that I never really tried before and I love it for that reason as well. This is a pretty popular collection of poetry. Um, and I think it's very, very well deserved. Next, I have The Upside of Unrequited by Becky Albertalli. This is her newest book that came out this year. It's a YA contemporary about a girl named Molly who struggles with her anxiety. And her twin sister, Cassie, has just gotten a girlfriend and Molly kind of wishes she could find somebody too. She's had a lot of unrequited crushes. She's never acted on any of them. And now that Cassie has a girlfriend, she is kind of feeling like she may want to find somebody too and actually act on one of her crushes. I love this book for a lot of reasons. First off, I really could relate to Molly in a lot of different ways and the fact that she never really pursued her crushes that much and the fact that she has anxiety and the fact that she is also fat. I think the fat rep in this book is fantastic. But I also loved it for its other diverse features because Molly's sister is gay and they were raised by two moms, one of which was gay and one of which was bisexual, and also their moms are interracial, which I think is really, really cool. Um, and also, their whole family is Jewish. So there's a lot of really great rep in here. A lot of it is own voices, and I just really love Becky Albertalli's writing anyway, so throw all that in and you get a really, really good book. This is right up there by The Hate You Give as one of my favorites. It is not my favorite. I think The Hate You Give is still my favorite, but this one's right up there because I just loved it so, so much. Next, I have Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. I finally read Crooked Kingdom this year. I think I read it in May or June, and man, what a finale. This is the sequel to Six of Crows, which is a duology that takes place in the Grishaverse several years after the events of the Grisha trilogy, but um, this book is excellent. I love the characters in Six of Crows so much. If you don't know what Six of Crows is about, it's about a group of six people who basically go to perform this really crazy, impossible heist, and then this is what happens afterwards. And Crooked Kingdom was great. I think I liked it even better than Six of Crows. It was a really amazing fantasy finale, and if you have not read the Six of Crows duology, you are missing out if you are a fantasy lover, because oh man. I recommend this duology to so many people, but guys, I loved this book. I cannot wait to reread this duology again as well. The next book I have was a nice little surprise. It's actually a classic book that I read this year and really, really loved, and that was Anne of Green Gables by L. M. Montgomery. This is a book that I've been meaning to read for years, and I just never did it, 
and then I decided to give the audiobook a try and I loved this story. This is now one of my favorite classics which is why I wanted to put it on this list. I'm sure you probably already know what Anne of Green Gables is about since it is a classic but if you don't it's about an orphan named Anne who mistakenly gets sent to the Cuthbert family who wanted a boy but Anne ends up staying with them and it's just kind of about her growing up. It's such a sweet story. I remember I loved the movie as a kid. I watched it all the time and I'm so glad that I finally decided to read the book and I loved it so so much. I also recommended the audiobook. The audiobook was fantastic. If you are a fan of Grey's Anatomy it's read by the woman that plays Meredith Grey's mother but she does a really really great job and I loved it. Next I have How to Make a Wish by Ashley Herring Blake. This is another YA contemporary. It's kind of a coming of age story about Grace who is kind of discovering her sexuality. She figures out that she's bisexual. She has a really really difficult home life because of her mom. She's a bit of a mess and it's just a really really great story. Grace ends up becoming friends with this girl named Eva and their friendship and eventual romance is just so so sweet and I thought in terms of the representation, in terms of the writing, this book was fantastic and kind of like Faking Normal, I wish this book got more attention because it deserves more attention for sure. Next I have The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. This is a YA historical fiction novel about a boy named Monty who is going to be going on his grand tour of Europe, which is something that they did back in the 1700s. He's taking his friend Percy along as well as his sister Felicity, and chaos ensues. Now Monty is bisexual. He's kind of an irritating character but he does grow quite a bit in this book and I also thought it was really good in terms of representation just for the time period. I thought that Mackenzie Lee did a really really good job with all of that. I know that Mackenzie Lee studied history and I think that she did a really really great job with this book but also it was funny and it was so much fun. I enjoyed every single second that I read this book and she's going to be writing a sequel with the sister Felicity and I cannot wait until that comes out. I highly recommend this book if you haven't read it already because it was so so much fun. And the last book I have as a favorite for this year is Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. If you watch any of my other videos you probably won't be surprised that this book made it because I really really love John Green but this is his newest book that came out this year and I think it's definitely his best. This book is about a girl named Aza who suffers from OCD and anxiety and it's about her and her friend trying to basically discover what happened to this millionaire that disappeared, which that part of the plot was okay, but what really made me love this book is the representation for OCD and anxiety. It is an own voices account of OCD as John also suffers from OCD and a lot of the anxiety thoughts that went through her head was something that I could really relate to and I really really appreciated it for that reason. Like I said, John Green is one of my all-time favorite authors. He's one of just my favorite people. I love him. and. This is definitely his best work, so if you don't like his other books, this one is very, very different and I think that you should give it a shot. So let me know down in the comments if any of my favorite books were also some of your favorite books for the year. And that'll be it for this video and I'll see you guys next time with another video. Bye!